they can come to the law society or they can reach out to us so that we can come and ensure that we give them all the legal support they may need. Um, we also spoke to one lady who is being discharged. She was, she, um, she was shot by a stray bullet on her way from work. And so she'll also be coming to the law society so that we can pursue legal redress for her. As it now, can you, how many, if we can ask for the exact figures, following yesterday's demonstration, how many casualties, that is the injured, did Kenya International Hospital receive? And how many death fatalities did they report? So they said there were quite a number and they have not been able to sit down and compile because everyone was all hands on deck. Um, but they have uh, invited Ipoa who are also sitting to just collect and do the statistics to support so that they get timely numbers of what is going on. Um, they said yesterday they did not get any dead on arrivals um, but some came um, with critical injuries and I think they got about two who died in the hospital arising from the critical injuries that they came with. Okay. So as of now you can confirm that yesterday's casualties is not recorded yet? Yes, they haven't confirmed the numbers yet. Okay. So they said as things come down they'll be able to um, ascertain the statistics and will be able to share, particularly with poor. Um, to ensure investigations are done. Are there any numbers on those who came in with gunshot wounds? You said one stray bullet, but now also the other confirmed for gunshot wounds? No, no, no. We don't have the number of confirmed. Um, she said uh, those will be shared with the IPOA and we'll be reaching out with the IPOA to confirm the numbers. All right. Yeah. Does the facility need any assistance in terms of, yes, people came out to give blood in large numbers, any other donations or things that they would require to ensure that everyone receives the critical care that they so do need? Um, so far they said the money they see received from the disaster fund has been adequate to enable them yeah. um, to support the patients that we have but we see the kind of um, skin burn injuries and the, the number of um, patients that are there and so I'm sure the hospital will be welcoming any well wishers wish to support because this is a public hospital and they'll continue to be receiving so many more patients. So I would say on, um, I'm not authoritatively speaking on their behalf but I'm saying any donations please support Kenyatta Hospital because they have been serving this nation, they have been serving Kenyans well. Can you have them say something as well? I, I, I doubt they want to say something. Yes. So we visited two wards and we saw hand and uh, leg injuries and so there are about, uh, we really didn't count but I see around 12. Uh, between 12 to 15 that we saw, but um, they are recuperating. Most have already received surgery, um, so they are they are on their way to recovery. Can you maybe identify their age in terms of Most are young people, though um, very few elderly, but mostly are young people. I would say. Um, Youth age, um, 35. so uh, 35 and below. Yeah. The gender mostly men, mostly men. In the word we saw mostly men. The we only saw a lady as she was being discharged. So I want to go away a bit from uh, from, from the patients here, in, and uh, there's a question of uh, the people who are seen as well as kids driving, uh, being. Uh, what as LSK we can say that we'll be filing a petition. Police should be able to be properly dressed and can be identified so that people are aware that these are police officers. But to see police dressed as if they are part of the thugs, yet they are fully armed, 
um, it brings a lot of fear to the general public and also the question of how can you hold accountable someone that you cannot identify because the video with the red um, pickup I remember even seeing it at the Supreme Court and the plates were turned up so you cannot see them and my question to the um, Inspector General of the National Police Service this is a kind of service that is giving to Kenyans that so that we cannot be able to identify the killer cops we are not able to identify those who should be held accountable because when you fully mask up and you're wearing a hat and you're covering your face with a bandana the aim is to be able to perpetrate violence and with total disregard and this comes after the backdrop that the head of state gave a second presidential address saying that not in his Kenya, not in his government, these things are not going to happen. And these are part of the reasons that the continued mistrust by the members of the public reigns high because the head of state speaks with one side and yet his actions or the actions of his agencies say something else. We should be able to identify who are these police officers, we should be able to identify them by their rank and by their names because they are properly uniformed. And further, the other policemen who shot at some of the journalists as they recorded the arrest of others. And I think people have been able to share his name and identity will be taking legal action against that particular office. The president had indicated that uh, six people are the ones who had lost their lives. And from what we've gathered so far, the numbers are still on the rise. Now, there are talks of the state trying to hide the identities and the exact figures of those who died during this protest. What does LSK have to say about that? Well, what we say is that we will not allow any um, rug, any of uh, the numbers to be swept under the carpet. We are working with other human rights groups and we are trying to collate and also working with the doctors to collate the numbers of deaths so that we'll be able to table a proper report and also table it um, to IPO and to members of the public because you cannot fake these things, you cannot hide these things. The government must be held accountable for each and every death that has been shed for the finance bill. So who would be able to explain the red, I'm still on the red uh, pickup because Kenyans are asking themselves, so what next, when, where are you sitting, are you going to seek uh, are you going to sue anyone? Are you going to go further and, and, and find out who these people are? Because right now we're just commenting on things we don't know whether they are police officers, whether they are KPF. So from where you are, what is the next action for people actually because they, they are a bit scared of who these people are? Well, as well, we cannot identify the persons, but we will hold those who are in command uh, responsible because there is still command responsibility. So the heads um, will hold the CS accountable, will hold the IG responsible. So and also the regional commander because these things are happening in their jurisdiction, these things are happening in their watch, so that means they have sanctioned the same. And so if we cannot identify those individuals, we'll hold them accountable for what those individuals are doing. Can I ask about Kenya? We see from LSK's perspective, we see there are still some of them uh, patrolling in the streets of the world. What, what do you make of that as LSK? Well, the courts had declared its decision on the same, though we respectfully disagree. Um, the court allowed the deployment to proceed and that the CS to do of defense to issue another gazette notice outlining several. Um, concerns that were raised that are part and parcel of the Constitution, yet the judge um, allowed the same. So our concern is that the kind of fear, the kind of tankers that we're seeing in these streets, it looks like it's a movie, um, that you're seeing the, na the Kenya Defense Forces patrolling. And you know, this is a challenge also to the head of state because he recently released quite a number of police forces to go to Haiti, yet now he's releasing the defense forces up upon the people of, of Kenya. And so this is a stark reality that probably that decision to take some of the national 
um, the members of the National Police Service to Haiti was a big mistake. And secondly, I will still reiterate that as much as the court has sanitized what is going on, this is a dangerous precedent that has been set and we might see more of this in the future. Uh, that at any whim that they can whip out that this is a, an emergency and that we will be having a rule, a government ruling using fear, using military upon its own people. Well, um, I think they raised reservation about commenting, so uh, we, we need to respect that. Yeah. So, when are we expecting the numbers, the tabulation of the numbers? So we'll be reaching out to IPOA to ensure that we get the numbers from them. We'll be having a meeting with them okay. to also raise our memorandum of some of the police officers that have since been identified and we'll also demand those numbers. And it's also imperative that the Attorney General, who has that duty and responsibility, should also account to IPOA and give the numbers because he is the advisor of the government and he ought to as well ensure that he tables the correct numbers. And if he doesn't, we will challenge them with our numbers. Yeah. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> 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 <laughs>